<laughs> Sergey. Really, really cool event for you. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> Guys, uh, we we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna do something pretty magical here, and we have a special surprise for you. We've got something pretty special for you. It's a little bit time sensitive, so I apologize for interrupting. Um, you've seen some really compelling demos here. They were slick. They were robust. Uh, this is going to be nothing like that. <laughs> this can go wrong in about 500 different ways. So tell me now, who wants to see a demo of glass? So, so we've been really excited to test it for a few months. The unit I actually really want to show you, uh, I lent to a friend, and, and he's going to be here momentarily. Uh, my friend's JT. He does a lot of skiing, base jumping, wingsuiting, all sorts of crazy things. And uh, he's actually pretty close by. He's just about a mile overhead right now with his buddies. Um, they have a few glass units. If you can, guys can maybe afford to wait that couple minutes, maybe they'll bring them down. All right. Uh, we're, we're about to get into a hangout here with, uh, with JT. Hey, uh, JT, JT, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, hello. We might have a few technical issues, as I mentioned. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, we're just down here in Moscone. I got a few thousand people here. I was hoping to, uh, to maybe get that unit I lent you down here, and I thought maybe you guys could show us a fun time on the way down. Yeah, heck yeah. You can hear me down there. I've been listening to your speech uh, through the Hangout. It's pretty cool. Cool, cool. Um, well, I see you and friends are, are pretty close by there. Any chance we can get a little view out the window? Heck yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful up here. We had oh, a visual on Moscone a minute ago. All right, this is the Hangout from Glass. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, a little closer, and I think we'll be able to get you that device pretty quickly, actually. All right, I, I see the roof of Moscone there. So if you guys can, uh, you know, be safe, but get it down here in a hurry for us, uh, we'd love to watch that. Okay, yeah, you'll have to stand by. We've got our wingsuits, so uh, we've got a pretty good range. It's kind of interesting. People have uh, watched us fly many times before, but I don't think that the world's ever tagged along live for a ride. I mean, we're, uh, nobody really knows the outcome of this jump. We're feeling really confident about it. How you feeling, Pete? Well, we're, we're all rooting for you. Awesome, uh, what do you guys think? So, Should they go for it? Uh, all right, let's do it. A little bit not in position yet, huh, Julian? About one minute, sir, okay? Maybe you got to entertain the crowd a little. That looks like the view down. It looks like a long way down. Yeah, you can turn, good. It, turn it sideways. Oh, yeah, there's the ball this part. Good stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moscow Center, I got a visual on you. Okay. So this is one of the things, as we've been uh, experimenting with glass, just the ability to really share. And we've posted some pictures, but as we start to experiment, being able to share what you're seeing live is really amazing. And, you know, we're not, we don't know what's going to happen here. I, you know, these guys are all really good. They're trained. And... Uh, I have great confidence, but this is um, this is a demo that. All right, doors open. Doors open. All right, happy flight. You know what? We can go. It's gonna be beautiful. Twenty Yeah, look at that. All right. San Francisco! Yeah. Right. Everyone hits it with a rock turn. Woo. All right, yeah, cool, buddy. guys. I'm on pins and needles right now. Yeah. yeah. Nice and close in there. Eight. They've got to get the right place so they can hit the roof. I'm going to record, take a few pictures to record this for posterity. And they're off. They're flying. Look at that. Look at that. You can see Moscone right below there. Live hangout through Google Glass. We've got four skydivers. 
and and they're under canopy. Shoots are open. Whew. Okay, where's Vic? Vic, hey, look, this is a hangout on air. Uh, so uh, it's a little bit tricky landing on a building, as you might imagine. I don't know if you've ever tried this kind of thing before. Uh, but uh, um, you, can, uh, you can see all their perspectives now. They're going to have to line up uh, one after another to get down to the roof here. Um, it's a little bit of um, it's a pretty big roof, actually, which is great for their landing. Um, and you can see there's a, there's a little uh, yellow arrow that they're aiming for. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Hopefully they, they landed. All right. And they're coming in. First one's coming in. All right. Hey, folks. Thank you. Woo hey, so the roof is a little bit big there, so uh, it would take a while to run down the length of it. So we got actually a few bikers up there for this eventuality. Um, we got them wearing glass, too. And uh, there's our little package. Let's see, if we can, uh, let's see if we can get it here in a hurry. All right, here we go. First person to do a glass. Here are the bikers. Yeah. Woo -hoo. I come down. Um, and you know, there's only one good way down the side of a building. It's pretty high up there if you haven't been up there before. Don't try this at home, kids. These are trained professionals. All right, now we gotta get down there. Want to unplug me? All right, here they're going. Oh, wait, 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 that one, wait, 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 we got a couple more bikes. It's a little bit of a long way. I apologize. Don't run anybody over. Oh, oh. All right. Please stay in your seats, folks. Don't get into the aisles. Please keep the aisles clear. Here they come up. That was pretty amazing. All right, a big round of applause for our bikers. All right, I got a little picture of you there with my glass. All right, thank you guys so much. All right, we got, uh, I just wanted to, some of our athletes who are performers just want to give them another big round of applause. We got the repellers in the back. Let's we'll sign them up. And uh, takes a little while. And uh, and we got this. Uh, let's see. And the skydivers should be chasing close behind him. Thank you guys so much. That was amazing. Okay. All right, thanks, guys. All right. Now maybe um, maybe we should 
Well, all right. Well, no, come on up, guys. You're already here. Come on up. Take a bow. These are the repellers, all the bikers you saw up there. And there's the skydiving crew coming down the aisle. Hey, JT, nice, that was amazing. Nice, all right. Thank hey, thank you, guys. Awesome. We, were, we were worried about you. That was awesome. All right, thank you all so much. Uh, now maybe we should tell you a little bit about glass. <laughs> all right, guys, have fun. You can meet them. Uh, they'll be out and around if you want to chat with them. Thank you so much. Now, here's what... Uh, no, no, this is the wrong one. Wait. <laughs> I'm going to have to... I, I think we have to do it again. All right, we'll find a time. We actually might find a time to, if you want to see behind the scenes and maybe catch some of that activity on, uh, through a Hangout. Uh, tune in tomorrow. Uh, but now I just want to tell you a bit about how we made that happen and uh, why we're so excited about Glass. And tell you that, I have Baba and Isabel. Please welcome them aboard. Um, good morning. So what can I say? Awesome. Um, I wanted to take a minute and tell you what was the device that enabled this beautiful demonstration that we just saw. The devices that we used were Google Glass prototypes and quite similar actually to what I'm wearing at the moment. Uh, this device includes, which by the way is not that you see on, <laughs> behind me, slightly different, uh, has a display so I can see visual information right now, images, uh, video. It has a camera to capture a picture and video also. It has a processor, a pretty powerful processor to process information and a lot of memory to store information. In order to interact with this device, we have a touchpad on the side. Uh, we also have a little button here, so I'd like to take a picture of you right now, which I just did. We have a microphone so we can collect audio information. We also have a small speaker so I can receive audio information. The device also has a number of sensors. So we have gyroscopes, accelerometers, and compass. So it's aware of its location with respect to my body, and is also aware of its location in the broader uh, physical world. And lastly, and very importantly, it has multiple radios for data communication. To give you a bit about the history of our, our group, we started about two, two and a half years ago to incorporate this, te this much technology into a very small form factor. And the picture that you see behind me, this is a good friend of mine, one of the pioneers of wearable computing and one of our team members. This is Thad Starner. We had to hack things together. Uh, we're sort of a hacky, informal group uh, to get the technology on, pe on people's bodies to make it wearable and test out, uh, test out ideas. So we started from this point two, two and a half years ago. And through a lot of hard, hard work by, by our team and experimentation, um, we made progress and uh, reduced the form factor to what you see here. Now, I would like to invite our uh, lead designer, Isabel, to talk about some of the design philosophy that has gone into this device. Thank you. So we created Glass so that you can interact with the virtual world without distracting you from the real world. And one clear example of this is that we decided to actually position the display above your eye. And glass as a whole is designed to be close to your senses, but not blocking them. And this picture shows so clearly how we don't want technology to get in the way. The baby looks into the mom's eyes. They connect. And while doing that, she can capture this beautiful moment without any distractions. And whether it's with family or friends, we want to empower people to use technology naturally, like in this moment of celebration. So we wanted to pack all this amazing technology into this product. 
to let you do amazing things with it. But that's also in slight conflict too that if this is not ridiculously light, it doesn't belong on your face. And we didn't only want to make it physically light, but also visually light. We don't want to compete too much with the user's own individuality, so no superfluous detailing, and we really try to reduce it to its core essence. And one of the results of this is that our latest prototype weighs less on your nose than many sunglasses. So, um, what it really dawned on me that we were on to something was when I started seeing people in our team posting pictures on Google Plus while running with it. And if it's not super comfortable and super sturdy, <laughs> how would you be able to show up your serve like this? This is Max on our team. He, he wanted to brag a little bit. Um, but um, sometimes it's just you want to do less conventional sports, like jumping into ball pits. So we want glass to work for many people in most situations. And realizing that we needed to create a scalable design. We decided to put all the components off to one side, creating an asymmetrical design, but that's balanced. And what this allows us to do is to design different form factors for the frames. And this is something we're experimenting a lot with, and here you can see Mike, Lisa, and Maddie wearing their favorite styles. So we have this. Uh incredibly powerful platform, lots of capability, uh, integrated into a very small form factor wearable. And you might be wondering, what is the impetus for our team to embark on this journey to build this system? And what are the uses that we envision for this? What's the, what's the reason for people actually to put this on their head? Broadly speaking, we have two uh, broad uh, regions of aspiration. The first one has to do with communicating through images and the second one with very rapid access to information. If you think about actually how we connect to people today, we might have a conversation or we may call them. So there's an audio way of connecting to others. We may send them an SMS, we may send them an email, we may send them a letter. So we use letters of alphabet, our writing, to uh, convey our, our emotions to other people of how we feel at that very moment or at any given point in time. And we believe actually communication with images and access to devices that empower people to communicate with images in new ways are uh, truly revolutionary and may actually uh, hey. enable people to um. uh, connect in new and pot uh, potentially better ways. Now, wearing okay. a glass has a okay. certain so unique aspects to it. For example, when you have a companion Maybe camera that's always with you, you can catch fleeting know. moments in your life that otherwise would be always lost. It's an, a, an example of a group member walking on the beach. I'm sure many of you in the audience, like myself, are uh, parents, and many, many times you've asked and wished that, oh, I wish I had a camera with me right now to capture this unique moment with my family. When you have glass, you can actually capture those moments and have those memories forever recorded for you. This is pretty important, actually, uh, when we enable such things. Another unique aspect of class is that this is genuinely the first person uh, point of view through your eyes as you see the world. This is uh, one of our team members uh, finishing a race. And you can, uh, you can see actually how it felt at that very moment, basically going through a very long run. Or you might have a moment of respite, and this is how the world looked, like, uh, looked to you as you were enjoying uh, a few seconds of break uh, through, your, uh, through your busy day. And going back to the theme of family, um, you can actually record how your life uh, looked like with your loved ones through the first person point of view. Uh, quite, quite important, I think, and it could be very, very powerful. 
And uh, honestly, there are some moments that you may not want to record forever, but sometimes it happens. So this is, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is Will. He's sitting right here. He's one of our team members, and he's just practicing pool. So these things can also uh, happen. So you've seen all these unique moments that our team members have captured just using the device for a couple of months. So all this footage is from our team using Glass, which is pretty incredible. Um, but what really excites me uh, about this is not only the unique perspective from your point of view, but how easy and seamless it is to share. And I think this encouraged people to, to do new things with it. I mean, we just pictured, we just saw how it is to jump out of a plane. And you can experience these moments where you feel like you're there. And you don't actually even need a glass device to do that. Um, so here is... Um, uh, for example, learning new things. Uh, this is uh, Bo uh, going through step by step how to create uh, very tasty dumplings. Um, and I think there's something really powerful about this. And sometimes it's all about feeling like you're there. Um, this uh, stream of pictures showed up and I was sitting at my desk, a little bit bored, and this comes up. And I had this visceral reaction that I got so much anxiety all of a sudden. I could totally relate to Steven sitting in this chair. And, and these pictures continuously showed up in real time. And I was also able to write little comments and say, dude, it's all going to be OK. And sometimes it's not about grand things. Sometimes it's only about communicating an emotion or in a situation. And this is Mike walking on the street in, in New York and um, looking for some empathy from his friends in California. So the second main aspiration that we have for Glass is to enable people to access information very quickly. Nowadays, if you have a question, if you're uh, looking for um, uh, answers to your questions, you may do a variety of things. You may seek a friend and ask him what, what is the answer to my question. You may go to the library and go through books. Uh, but more likely than not, you will reach to your pocket, take out the cell phone, unlock it, and do a search, and you get some amazing results back, actually. I, you know, we saw some incredible technology just, just now demonstrated by Android. And what we aspire to do is to make that even much, much faster. And someday, you would like to make this so fast that you don't feel that you have a question, you have to go seek the knowledge somewhere, bring it back, and analyze it. We would like it to be so fast that you feel you know it that fast. And that day may not be today, that day may not be tomorrow, but at least that's our aspiration. And we would like to be able to empower people to access the information very, very quickly. And in, in practice, basically, they feel more knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about certain topics. Now, there are different types of information that you might have in front of you. So for example, you could be in a place, you'd like to have information about this place without disconnecting from your physical environment. Uh, you might also want to know how to navigate to the next, uh, next place. There's a lot of interesting information, actually, in this scene. Or you may be biking, and you want to know how fast you're going. Obviously, you don't want to disengage from the physical world, go, go to the computing world, and come back. You want to remain engaged with the physical world in an unhindered way, and still get the information that you would like to have. Um, another thing that may come up is that you may face an entirely new and unexpected situation. So there's a picture from a friend of mine, uh, Xiaoyu, he's a team member, and he was sent to the market by his wife to do some shopping, and you just are baffled at what you're, you're seeing, and you would like to have information right at that very moment in front of you without disengaging from the physical world. So we're very excited about this possibility, and uh, I'm particularly ex excited to present this to you because the crowd here, the people who are watching, are some of the smartest people, developers in the world. And I think you would actually hopefully help us to figure out what kind of information we should, uh, we should bring here and put in front of people's eyes. So the, the possibilities are just incredible. So 
We shared a little bit about our perspective on glass and from our team and pictures and videos and also some of the incredible things you can do. Um, but what really sums it up for me is this video. This is baby June. Our family is in France, so for us it's really important to show them how she's growing, how she's changing. With babies, it's really hard to grab the right moment. A smile just lasts for a few seconds and that's all. When you use a, a big camera, she gets really focused on the camera. You know, she smiles at faces, not at devices. Every day, we try to go out for a little walk. June really loves being in the stroller. Everything is new for her. So we really like to take funny pictures of her. I think she enjoyed it. <laughs> hey, salut. Bonjour, Anka, how are you? I'm good, but I miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We have these little American glasses that she likes to wear. It's kind of amazing for us French to have this little American girl at home. Oh, well, it's here. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you guys very much. And I'm so jazzed that that actually worked. The whole bit, airship, everything, and this presentation. Um, I wasn't really expecting it to. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to tell you there are, well, you've seen a whole bunch of stuff. I've, I'm really personally really excited about glass in my day-to-day -day usage. You know, I've had moments with family like that. Um, and there, there are all kinds of things this can capture and share. Uh, but, but obviously, uh, capturing images, videos, even sharing video, that's only a part of what uh, a wearable computer can do. And uh, um, we've highlighted a few other little things here, but why are we showing you, uh, you know, basically this, this kind of utility? And there are basically three reasons. Um, the first is because we've just found it incredibly compelling since, since we made these and started using them out and about. Uh, we've just found that to be amazing. Um, the second is it's actually one of the things we can show you uh, because, you know, you all can't experience what it's like to have, uh, to have all this information available right here just like that. Um, and so, you know, there are other kinds of things that we use it for, but it's kind of hard to make a, uh, it's hard to demonstrate. I guess you could put one glass on top of another glass and then you'd kind of <laughs> see what we experience. But that might be awkward. Uh, so, so you haven't had a chance to experience it. And, uh, and third, you know, we're a pretty small team, and we've only had so much time uh, to, to try various kinds of functionality. And in fact, every day we've been getting great ideas from inside, from outside, from all, all around the world. And that's why we really want to involve all of you. Uh, I mean, this developer community is going to be key to us. And that's why today I'd like to announce uh, the Google Glass Explorer Edition, which is going to be uh, it's going to be something that we'd like to get in the hands of people who are really passionate about it, uh, who want to be among the earliest uh, to get this device. This is not going to be a consumer device in the sense, you know, it's going to be rough around the edges. You've got to be, like, you really want to, you have to want to be on the bleeding edge. Uh, and that's what this is really designed for. Um, so uh, it's only available uh, for pre-order uh, here uh, at I.O. Um, it's, it's, I, I apologize, it's right now it's only for U.S.-based I.O. attendees. It's just a bunch of regulatory stuff that we have to get through. And uh, uh, so, you know, we'll try to broaden the base over time. We're just, we're trying to get it out to people as early as we can so we can get that feedback. Uh, it will be uh, $1,500, and we're going to ship it to you uh, we plan on shipping to early next year. Um, I know this is uh, a lot of the things we discussed here, like you know, you can get MMT and whatnot. This is a really new technology, and uh, we really want to get all of you to help shape it. And uh, that's why we really want to get it out into the, the hands of passionate people as early as possible. So 
Uh, by the way, you can get that. There's going to be a booth set up. It's just going to be outside on your right. And you can stop by there anytime today or uh, tomorrow during the conference. Uh, right now, we're only accepting orders at the conference. So um, this is not, as I said, a mass consumer order. And uh, do, 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 what? I have some cleanup I have to do. So I apologize also. I, uh, I kind of uh, interrupted Vic's presentation. So um, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I want to thank Isabel and Babak so much for presenting up here. And another round of applause for all the people who brought this together. Uh, and uh, please, let's see, is Vic ready? Vic, I'm so sorry. But thank you all very much. We're going to see you around the conference. See you around the booths. Mm.